Yeah. So go to market is something that interests me. The greatest issue I have as an agency owner is with particularly challenger brands and newer ones that maybe are half the way half the way that that you are is giving them a framework to understand go to market. And so you would have had good insight in this. We're in this area of social commerce, which is sort of involving influencers with social media and commissions and ads and all that. And then your classic social Mm -hmm. selling, which is your pipeline of performance marketing, essentially. For me, I find if you look at sort of the buckets that need to, to basically work, you've got performance marketing, that sort of brand stuff with influencers and then sort of integrated product with say influencers or PR or stuff like that. And I feel like performance marketing is the one that is consistently missed from people who don't have marketing experience and they can't get it just right. That's mainly what they're coming to us for. So, you know, I, I find in the first year they're testing too many channels for you in the first six to nine months, what was most important to you and Wyatt with your go to market and getting correct? Facebook ads. Okay. Plain and simple. Um, PR as well, because it just gave us a tremendous amount of reach, yep. which fed it back into our Facebook ads. But like you said, you know, people people don't, you see a lot of these challenger brands, they're, they're focusing all on the branding aspect. Yeah. But not on the performance marketing aspect. But the thing that drives scale. Yeah. Is is Facebook ads. Um, You are never going to get into seven figure territory if you can't profitably spend upwards of, you know, well, there's going to be outliers to what I say here always, but like (laughs) you need to be able to comfortably spend, you know, $50,000 a month plus on ads. Um, If you can't, you you just won't scale. So So that's a good point. A very good point and very topical for me right now and that we have a customer who um, have just gone through the strategy process. We've launched an ad. Um, they're above their break-even ROAS. Let's say it's 1.8. Mm. And I think as a general rule of thumb, so long as you're beating your break-even ROAS, you should be spending as much dollars as you can initially, mm-hmm. as long as you keep above that, that range. Now, this particular customer, I feel like they need the confidence to – to commit those dollars because of previous experiences they've had where maybe they've put in further dollars and the, the ROAS goes down or there might be some other little kink that they, they just didn't really fully understand because they're not marketers, right? Yep. So is there other things that you look for other than that BER to give you confidence to scale? Because at the moment they're spending you know a couple of hundred a week, but I know based on the sales they want to get to, they need to spend at least five to six grand a month minimum. Mm. So how how would you instill confidence in people who are initially starting out around things that they should look at? I would look at if you're getting sales from other areas, like your organic sales are increasing as well. You're getting really solid reviews. Um, you're getting repeat purchases if that's a thing for your business, which you know should be. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's just unique in that sense that we're not, but our next yeah. business will be for sure. Um, uh, and so really just getting that, that intuitive feel that people are really loving your product and they're coming back for more, they're telling their friends about it. They're leaving good reviews that should be a sign that, okay, we we know we've got something good here. And so we need to, we need to try to scale this as much as possible. Mm. Then you would go in to have a look at, okay, well, can I get my conversion rate on my website? as high as possibly can like is there something wrong with my offer do i need to change pricing do i need to fix something up on that site to get the conversion rate as high as possible because loads of people just forget about that when it comes to performance marketing yeah true true it's a good point yeah it's like it's equally as important you know you're spending all this money on getting people to click on your facebook ads yeah but then no attention on what they do once they've clicked on the actual website. Yeah. And that's a good point because we've had this recently with a few clients in that um, I think our paid media specialist was saying on average, now with the iOS change, Facebook ads can be off by up to 10, 20% in terms of the actual ROAS that they're giving. Yeah. So have your Google tags and your analytics like goals set up correctly. Otherwise you don't actually know what's Mm. truly happening. 100%. So then- 
look at things like email marketing, like are you building a list correctly? Is your abandoned cart functioning well? Is your welcome series functioning well? Yeah. Um, because you, you need all, all of those elements together to work well. Mm-hmm. Um, but also for us, for example, like if we didn't do PR, then our Facebook ads wouldn't have worked as well. And if we didn't do Facebook ads, our PR wouldn't have worked as well. Mm. So everything feeds together. Yeah, it all it all adds up, but you also have to have them all going. You can't just do one. You've got to get them all performing. I think email is one that's often overlooked because it's not as sexy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the topical thing for me at the moment has been that conversion rate thing because I've gone into websites where the tags aren't set up correctly and um, like I've seen we've been running ads and it, it's not even showing on Google Analytics, which yeah. is crazy. Like as in, it'll show organic channels, you know, email, search, all that sort of stuff. And then for some reason, Facebook paid or cost per click paid is not showing up. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think that's, that's one that's often overlooked. 